Good afternoon. Welcome to our 23 first half results presentation and thanks a lot for joining us today. In the first six months of this year, our group revenue increased by 28% over prior year. The EBITDA grew 41% and adjusted profit expanded by 85%. This positive financial performance supported a 57% increase in free cash flow, resulting in net financial debt of $1.870 million, which represented one times last 12 month EBITDA. Our results in the first half of the year were driven by our segment's strong operating performance, which were supported by the high continued strengthening of the travel industry. Global traffic continued to advance to the second quarter, with domestic traffic posting positive growth over pre-pandemic levels and international traffic advancing steadily. Additionally, we have remained highly focused on our R&D efforts and CapEx programs through the period as we are investing for the future. Our key areas of focus include the evolution of our hospitality platform, a partnership with Microsoft and our ship to the cloud, the implementation projects of new customers across our business, NDC-related solutions and capabilities, including our next generation airline retail offering under the offers and orders initiatives, and portfolio enhancements and expansion, including airline IT, digitalization, and enhanced shopping and retailing, and the evolution of our portfolio for travel sellers, airports, and in payments. Finally, we were pleased to resume shareholder remuneration in full at Amadeus, an important piece of our capital allocation strategy. In June, we announced a shared sales program of over 430 million, and in July, we made payment of our ordinary dividend at 74 euro cents per share, amounting to a total of 333 million. Let's now review the key developments of each of our reported segments. In the past quarter, we signed 16 new contracts of renewals of distribution agreements, taking the total to 36 for the first half of the year. We continue to advance with our NDC strategy to expand our customer base and to upsell technology to a number of our airline, travel agency, and corporate customers. With regards to our volume evolution, in the first six of the year, Amadeus booking grew by 17% relative to prior year. Please remember that the recovery experienced by the travel industry throughout 2022 impacts our booking growth rates in 2023. Relative to 19, Amadeus booking in the second quarter improved for the first quarter performance by 3.4 percentage points to minus 21.7 versus 19. This resulted in a minus 23.5 versus 19 performance for the first half of the year, outperforming our industry supported by market share gains. Our best performing region remains North America, which grew 4% in the first half relative to 19 and was Amadeus' largest region in the period, accounting for 29% of our bookings. Over the first half, APAC has been the region experiencing the strongest improvement in growth relative to 2019. Finally, into July, we continue to see an improvement in our booking evolution. In terms of business developments, we recently signed a new Altea PSS contract with an undisclosed airline carrying 25 million passengers annually. Also, several airlines customers signed for additional solutions or implemented new solutions such as Tunisair, Vistara, Air Corsica, and KLM. In Airport IT, we continue to expand our reach through new agreements with several players, including Noida. International Airport, the operator of Terminal 4 at John uh, F. Kennedy International, Munich, uh, and a group, uh, Munich uh, T1 Airline Club, a group of carriers operating from Terminal 1, and Spokane International Airport. In relation to our volume, Amadeus PV were 37% higher in the first half of the year than in the same period of 22, driven by continued progress in travel industry and new customer implementations. Please remember that the recovery experienced by the travel industry through 22 impacts our PV growth rates this year. Amadeus passengers boarded for the months of the year were 5% below 19. This was composed of organic growth of minus 6, and in organic growth from customer implementations, the more recent ones being Etihad, ITA, and Hawaiian Airlines in 23, and Air India in 22, partly offset by airline customers ceasing or suspending operations or demigrating from our platform, including the demigration of Russian carriers during 22. 
The first half of 23, North America remains our best performing region, delivering 28% growth over 19, and Western Europe was our largest region, representing 32% of Amadeus passengers' border. Over the first half, North America and Asia Pac were the regions reporting the strongest improvements in growth relative to 19. Into July, based on the most recent data that we have, our PIB performance versus 19 has continued to advance. Hospitality and other solutions continue to advance well, supported by new customer implementations and volume expansion. As a result, our revenues in this segment grew by 24% in the first half, relative to prior year. Both hospitality, which generates the majority of the revenues in this segment, and payments deliver strong growth versus prior year. The first question comes from Adam Wood from Morgan Stanley. I just wanted to start off, there was a win away from you. Um, on the CRS in the hotel business this quarter. Again, I understand that you probably won't want to comment directly on that, but could you just comment more broadly on the competitive landscape around um, CRS? Our perception was that coming out of COVID, um, you know, your technology lead had widened significantly given other competitors came out um, in a lot weaker position. Um, are we maybe being a little bit too optimistic on that or is pricing more of a factor in those deals than we might have thought? Um, and then secondly, on the uh, distribution side of the business, we've traditionally talked about your competition with the other GDSs, but I guess with NDC, we now see other aggregators in the market who have, a, we think, a decent share on the NDC volumes. Could you talk a little bit as, about, as volume scale, how you're seeing market share shifts happen um, on the distribution business? Um, are you seeing share move away from them back into the traditional GDS market um, as you expand the NDC offerings? Thank you. Okay, let me try to cover. I don't know if I got uh, completely the, the last part, uh, Adam, uh, but I will tr try to cover uh, what I understood, Abby, and if not, just let me know. With regards to the CRS, no, I think uh, we are still optimistic about the CRS. Of course, uh, there is always competition, uh, but uh, we keep talking to customers. Of course, our biggest project today, as you know, is the migration of Marriott, but there are, there are prospects uh, uh, there, uh, and we keep uh, being optimistic about the future of the CRS, and hopefully, uh, we will be able to really uh, get attraction and sign uh, additional customers, but uh, so far so good. Uh, and uh, we keep complementing the platform and uh, are pretty optimistic about that. Again, there will be solutions in the market that would compete with us, definitely yes. Uh, but we feel what we have developed is, is a state of the art system and with a lot of capabilities to compete. Uh, with regards to the GDS, competition is always there, of course. You have uh, different dynamics, as you said, uh, per country, per region. Uh, our goal is to keep increasing share. Uh, and then NDC, the, we see uh, an increase uh, of volumes on the GDS, but still small uh, as we keep implementing customers and, and we keep uh, this journey. I mean, uh, for me, NDC is a journey where you have... Uh, uh, still, you know, despite the fact that there are standards, there are different versions of the connectivities, different, different APIs in the way you connect uh, to the carriers and also how we integrate in the system. We believe what we have makes sense, uh, but of course we also expect uh, our competitors or whoever is, is dealing with the content aggregation uh, will compete with us in the future. We are confident about our investments in this front that we have been doing for years. Uh, we have signed 40 customers already, uh, 20 uh, have been implemented, uh, and, and again, we see an uptake of, of bookings, but still low levels that uh, probably in the coming uh, years will uh, definitely increase. Uh, I guess where I was coming from was, if you look at the, the aggregators that are kind of new entrants into the market when MDC came on, do you believe that you're growing more quickly on MDC volumes than they are as MDC scales? Well, look, uh, this is uh, difficult to say. Uh, of course, there has been a number of aggregators that were getting into some pieces of, uh, of the volume because when you need to connect, uh, you know, uh, especially when you have uh, connectivity, which is one by one, we can also provide that, uh, but our, our uh, approach is to really integrate and provide uh, the travel agencies with the alternatives to really connect content from different airlines and from different technologies to do that in an economic way. Uh, and therefore, uh, they, as soon as this gets traction, uh, we expect to really uh, grow faster. Uh, but at this point, as I said, uh, the volumes are still small. I mean, of course, we are growing fast, but from a very small base. Uh, there are some travel agencies that are more advanced than others, especially when we talk about the online space, uh, but the business side of, uh, of, of the business is, is, is behind, okay? And we will try to really provide a solution that is serving 
the different needs of the different travel agencies. So there are some aggregators that are doing some connectivity directly to the airlines. For us, this is a long-term journey, but I believe the GDSs are very well positioned uh, to really do that in, a, in the proper way where you can integrate the different actors. The next question comes from Victor Chang from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Just pressing on the kind of latest U.S. airline commentary, there seems to be a trend pushing faster to NBC adoption. And they also talk about a managed corporate travel recovering faster than managed corporate travel. Um, do you see any impact from this in Q2? And what are your expectations on this going forward? We have contracts with many airlines, including some of the U.S. carriers uh, for NDC, and we try to really provide the functionality that is needed. Uh, and therefore, we are not expecting short term. I mean, again, we will need to see if, by, if the volumes uh, are coming through the GDS. But our assumption, our expectation is that uh, we are going to really be able to really benefit from the NDC moving forward. Again, there will be competition. There may be some cases of content that is going to be managed, but not different from what, in my view, has happened during many years as the airlines trying to push their direct sales to the market. Uh, and therefore, we keep our confidence that the volumes uh, in the coming years will be here as they have been in the past. I mean, it could be in some cases volume that is uh, getting out and volume that is coming back to the system depending on the conditions and depending on the regions, but we are not assuming uh, a negative impact in the coming quarter. Definitely not. Thank you. The next question comes from Michael Brees from UBS. But on the GDS business, um, I mean, the European and American trends year on year don't look great. What are you seeing there specifically? And what are you expecting for the second half of the year? With regards to, to the GDS in Western Europe, I mean, one of the factors, of course, that we have been uh, mentioning to you is that uh, still the growth of uh, low-cost carriers have been stronger. I mean, in, in Western Europe, definitely, you know, I mean, I'm, now I'm talking about traffic. I mean, the growth of, uh, of, of Ryanair compared to some of the more full-service carriers, I mean, there's a, a, a big, big, big gap uh, in terms of growth. So, of course, as uh, traffic recovers and international traffic and business traffic recovers, hopefully uh, there could be uh, further growth in Western Europe and therefore uh, impacting uh, positively our volumes. Again, I mean, Ryanair is a customer of us, as many of the low cost, and therefore in terms of volumes for our TVs and our IT, this is positive. Uh, but, of course, they are less intermediated and therefore they are having, uh, there, there is less volume Overall, on the GDS, uh, this is why the bookings are behind. So, look, I will expect uh, also the, the, the full service carriers to keep recovering uh, in the coming months. But again, needs to be seen because uh, definitely low costs have been moving well ahead and the laser travel has been uh, doing much better than business travel during the last, uh, during the last uh, quarters. Thank you. 